That old version of me didn't have boundaries. That old version of me didn't have self-respect. That old version of me didn't know who I was. So I took stuff I shouldn't have took. But in this season... But the interest, entrance into this kind of life where you're proof requires an exit an exodus out of your proverbial mental Egypt now last week I unpacked Egypt I can't unpack it again for the sake of time but one of the truths we talked about in terms of what Egypt represents scripturally is not just that which is evil but that which is irrelevant. It's not that Egypt is wrong. It's just wrong for me now. Let me go to this side. It's not that something's wrong with that. If you like that, God bless you. I don't mind you liking that. Have at it. Enjoy that. But for me, that represents Egypt. It represents that which satisfied a version of me that no longer exists. Because my evolution impacts my appetite. <laughs> there was some stuff I had an appetite for when I was an inferior version of me. But now that I've leveled up, so has my appetite. And there were some things that satisfied me that no longer satisfied. You got to come correct in this season. Do you know that the quality of your life is based on the quality of your decisions? And the quality of your decisions is based on the quality of information that you have. That, so that means you need reliable sources of information. And the most reliable source of information in the world is the Bible. But you know what? Most people don't understand it. And if you want to understand the Bible, God is enough, but Sunday is not. I want to help you understand. I want to help you interpret and apply. I want to help you explain the Bible better. This is why I'm inviting you to be a part of my tribe called Bible You. That old version of me didn't have boundaries. That old version of me didn't have self-respect. That old version of me didn't know who I was. So I took stuff I shouldn't have took. But in this season, But we've got to make a mental exodus because Egypt is not always evil. It's just irrelevant. It served its purpose for that season. So we're not saying that the mindset is wrong. We're saying it's not relevant for you now. And if you're comparing the mindset God's calling you to have with the mindset other people have, you will be satisfied because you are gauging your success based on the stagnation of somebody else. Hiya! See, just because you're better than others doesn't mean you're growing. It may mean they stuck. But you got to ask yourself based on what God's trying to do with my life. Based on what he's trying to do with my life. What mindset is required for his mission for my life? Not is it better than others. And I don't know if y'all ready for this. I'm, I don't want to get ahead of myself. But sometimes leaving a certain mindset also necessitates leaving other people who had it.
Because some of us, the only thing we have in common with some people is reminiscing over a version of us we no longer want to revisit. All we're talking about is our dysfunction. All we're talking about is the dumb stuff we used to do. I don't want just people in my life that have a common past. I need some people in my life who have a common future. And Israel is an example of this. They make a physical exodus out of Egypt. Their location changed, but their mentality didn't. So what does this mean, Darius? It means they are out of Egypt, but Egypt is not out of them. Egypt, that season of suffering, that season of stagnation is a season that also molded their mind in a way. That even when they came out of Egypt physically, they survived, but their mind didn't. See, here's the way Jesus puts it in John 10. 10. Y'all can be seated. I got 14 minutes. Here it is. Here it is. <laughs> I got 14 minutes. <laughs> Jesus said, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Now, most of the time when people are, are interpreting that passage, they just focus on the kill and destroy. But Jesus emphasizes calling Satan a thief. The first thing he calls him is a thief. Because what he does most is steal. And here's what's crazy about a good thief. A good thief steals and you don't know you've been stolen from. <laughs> a good thief steals something in your past. You don't even know it's gone until you reach for it in your present and you realize I don't have it. And some of us can relate to this. A good thief can not only steal and you not know you're being stolen from. Sometimes they steal and you don't know where it got stolen. Some of us have been in Egypt so long, we don't know what season stole something from us. See, when we don't understand that the enemy is a thief, we can be celebrating simply surviving Egypt. We can be shouting, I survived, and high-fiving, I survived. And sometimes while we're celebrating survival, the enemy's saying, but I didn't send that to kill you. You survived, but your dream didn't. You survived, but your optimism didn't. You survived, but your focus didn't. He stole. But I want to know, I got to go. I want to know, am I talking to anybody that's got an attitude with the enemy? I want to know if I got anybody that's got a little kingdom knock if you buck in you. That's going to tell the devil, you're not going to steal from me. And I just sit here and have a pity party. I want everything the devil stole from me.